There are many methods or pedagogies which purport to be the only way to train the singing voice. The most well-known being the bel canto model of singing which occurred in late 17th century Italy and which evolved right through to the mid-19th century. It was also exclusively attributed to the Italian operatic repertoire. Today, the bel canto method is referred to very often without much understanding of exactly what it is, other than to mean beautiful singing. But in reality, it was a pedagogy which dealt with impeccable legato line, excellent breath control, clear even tone, register control, flexibility, vocal agility, and so on. And we've been left to set of bel canto technical singing exercises, which train all of those aspects in a voice very well. Training voices has come on a long way since the bel canto tradition, based largely on the fact that over the last 30 to 40 years, we've been able to more readily view the movement and activity of the larynx using the modern laryngoscope. I'm often asked what method I use when training a vo voice both in the classical tradition or in musical theatre styles, and my answer is always that there is no one method. However, I am happy to state that my teaching is informed by bel canto, Hustler Rod Marling, Estill and Ross Campbell, and that to my mind keeps it healthy. There is no one method but our voices work in a certain way anatomically, and I would argue that this is something teachers need to know in order to effectively train voices in all styles and genres of music. I have one voice, a larynx, and by training it with a set of anatomically informed exercises, I can operate in all styles of music, as I hope to demonstrate to you. I often ask a student if they consider the following sound to be singing or not. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Most people say that that is not singing. My answer is that it is singing because I'm pitching different notes, there's a melody, but that it is not a particularly sweet sound and not what they are used to hearing as singing. What they really want to hear is the following. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. So the difference is that the second one had some vibrato, some freedom and a sweetness in the sound. Whereas the first version was quite flat, sounding almost speech-like and not particularly pleasing to the ear. I was able to make that change by altering the position or posture of my larynx in my throat. If I take a Broadway musical theatre song, The Lullaby of Broadway, from the 42nd Street, it would be entirely inappropriate to use this sound. Come on along and listen to The Lullaby of Broadway. That is clearly the wrong sound for this style of music, sounding far too classical. Whereas if I use more of the first voice quality I used earlier and add some twang resonance, it becomes correct for that style of music. Come on along and listen to the lullaby of Broadway. I achieved this purely by understanding that my larynx needed to be vertical in a more neutral position and by engaging a part of my larynx which produces twang resonant, the areepiglottic sphincter. And then just to finish it off nicely, to prove that I can sing after all, I need to tilt the last note which will produce some vibrato and make a phrase sound complete. Come on along and listen to the lullaby of Broadway. By knowing how to change the posture of the larynx, it is possible to very quickly build up a rich palette of colours or voice qualities, which then enables the singer to use the correct quality for the style of music. My own background as a performer was predominantly classical music spanning opera, oratorio, and on the concert platform singing leader and art song from many different countries. 
but I often sang some of the earlier, more legit musical theatre repertoire in cabaret performances by composers such as Novello, Irving Berlin, Cole Porter, Gershwin, Rogers and Hammerstein, Jerome Kern, etc. It was only much later in my life through my own research as a teacher and through professional development that I realised I had been using the wrong voice quality for this genre of music. Generally speaking, classical styles of singing require a fully tilted, lowered larynx, thick vocal folds, some twang resonance, and a wider vocal track, sounding like this. <clears throat> Musical theatre styles, whilst being very varied, require a higher larynx, often thinner vocal folds, a mixture of neutral and tilted larynx together with some twang resonance, sounding like this. to musical theatre that the way in which I sang that final note would really be used in classical singing. A long, straight, held sound with more speech quality present and only releasing some vibrato into, into it to finish it off. <clears throat> if that was my classical singing, my final note would have been using a lowered larynx, fully tilted, producing a full vibrato throughout. throughout. Moving into more commercial musical theatre, here is an excerpt from Stephen Schwartz's light rock musical Pippin. Rivers belong where they can ramble. In order to produce a much more commercial and lighter sound, I raised my larynx, added more twang resonance and introduce weaker articulation. The end of this song gives me an opportunity to use a quality known as belt, which most classical singers worry about, but which is perfectly safe if produced correctly and healthily. As a trained and experienced opera singer, I found it incredibly liberating to finally give myself permission to use speech quality and belt, which are not present in the classical singing, and without any danger of weakening my classical sound. And finally, an excerpt in a melodic rock style, in which I'm using a higher larynx, a mixture of speech quality and tilt, twang resonance, and weaker articulation. I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I put down in words. I firmly believe that by having the knowledge and ability to operate in as many different voice qualities as there are styles of music, strengthens the voice, gives it flexibility, freedom, stamina and longevity. So to conclude, when I embark on training a singing voice, I thoroughly believe that a student who wishes to perform only in the musical theatre and more commercial repertoire can gain so much from singing some of the classical repertoire in their training. It is the ballet of dance, after all. A singer who can operate in all styles of music, using the appropriate voice quality, has many more opportunities open to them if they're entering the profession. For example, when training musical theatre singers, I always impress upon them that they should have a classical song or even an operatic aria in their portfolio of music. They should be able to use neutral speech quality right through to belting safely, as well as the classical and operatic qualities, particularly if they have some classical training in their background. So keep it varied, keep it healthy, and above all, keep it happy.